Now, in response to this uh, concern raised by the DSS, the NLC is saying that um, they will never do anything that will compete with the country's sovereignty or uh, security, and that they cannot fold their hands and pretend that all is well. How do we, we how do we resolve this impasse as it is? Because NLC is insisting, the DSS is saying we know it's your right, uh, but then some persons might want to hijack this protest. Well, uh, at the face of it, it looks like uh, DSS is uh, trying to wash out for the country, but I don't think they are the best. A person on the other end of the table for NLC to engage with. Uh, lately, in the past year or two, I've observed that DSS has been uh, kind of biting more than it can, it can shoe, in that it's going into territories that are quite political and that is against its own mandate. It has the job to protect the country, to fish out uh, nefarious elements in society, but it's, it's talking more than it's actually acting. You do your job, let NLC do their own, as it were. So NLC has to engage, uh, there's no doubt about that, but the other people that should be talking to NLC at this stage is not DSS. I'm quite concerned that we are militarizing the, the civil space with uh, army talking for government, with uh, DSS talking for government, with police talking for government, even when uh, it is not an issue that is uh, strictly political or concerned with, with their matter. So uh, I will want uh, NLC and TUC to continue to engage. Uh, strike should be the last resort in, in, any, in any circumstance. But uh, still, they, they have the right to go on strike if uh, all avenues have been exhausted. I'm not sure it has been exhausted at this stage. Uh, but what you should realize, uh, talking as an economist, is that uh, protests themselves is like a safety valve in civil discourse. So it's not, it's not uh, really the thing that we should be afraid of. What we should be afraid of from a social unrest standpoint is those uh, unrests, those protests that are not planned, that can spring up because of the level of hardship in the country. I won't lie to you, there's, there's a lot going on, people are passing through a lot, and the president, the presidency, and the political class needs to watch it and watch it very carefully so that they don't put all of us in jeopardy. I'm sure they mean well, but when policies are not working, it is an incubant on the presidency and whoever are the leaders at a particular point in time to take a second look at whatever policies they are dishing out to know why it's not working. There are enough tools in economics and economic analysis to help us through stages like this. We should not go the way of Zimbabwe. Things, things have been done before in other places. Look out for those who are competent. Look out for those who have, who have the pedigree to diagnose just like doctors would do, understand the panacea that are needed and you know, dish out whatever is needed to help us come back, at least claw back from, from the brink. We are approaching the brink, the, the kind of uh, losses we are, we, are, we are seeing in the value of our currency over the last uh, eight months or thereabout is unprecedented in the annals of this country. Yeah, we can't say it's business as usual. We can't say, okay, it will work at the end. Of what use is, uh, is, is the surgery when the patient is dead. So we don't want the patient to die. We want the surgery to be successful. If it's not working, if the, the metrics are not looking okay, we should claw back and at least take a second look before we go further. My thoughts.